industry partner presentation. Uh, today, we are very fortunate to have Christina Marcus, um, Outreach Coordinator for IBW's uh, Apprenticeship Training Program. Um, in today's presentation, Christina is going to talk to you a little bit about her program, what they offer, the training, uh, career opportunities, a ton of uh, useful information that uh, hopefully you guys will be able to take in and use as a resource for when you are trying to decide which pathway you want to take under the building and construction CTE uh, pathway, okay? So without further ado, Christina, take it away. Thank you for uh, being with us. Thank you so much, Ernesto. We highly appreciate the partnership that uh, you have had with us. Uh, the San Diego Office of Education has been amazing, and I love that you're uh, assisting us in uh, linking um, us with the students of uh, San Diego County. You know, they deserve to, to know about these types of opportunities, especially when it comes to essential workers, which is electricians and other um, industries. Um, so first off, I want to make sure you know that we do have a website. Please write it down, etiedu.org. That's on the bottom of the screen right now, etiedu.org. We're also on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, you can just search Electrical Training Institute and it'll pop up. Make sure it's for San Diego and Imperial Counties. Um, so. I'm an outreach coordinator, but I'm also a journeyman, a journeyman sound technician. I went through the low voltage program. And um, my goal now as outreach coordinator is to be able to tell um, the next generation about opportunities in a career, a career like being an electrician, where you're building things, you're working together as a team, and you're, um, you're helping the economy, economy move. Uh, so our apprenticeship has been around since 1945. That's 75 years. This is our 75th anniversary. Uh, we were formerly known as San Diego Electrical Training Center, and we've uh, just recently um, updated our name to Electrical Training Institute of San Diego and Imperial Counties. Uh, counties. So we do have two apprenticeships, one in Kearney Mesa off the Balboa and the 15. And then we have one in Imperial Valley, in case you live out that way. So without further ado, I'm gonna move forward and kind of talk about the partnerships that we have so that we can um, help train the best electricians in San Diego and Imperial counties. So IBW, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 569, which represents San Diego and Imperial counties, um, we have over 3,600 members in IBW Local 569, which is a union. So we work together to um, try and um, be the best of the best and also give back by training the young generation like apprentices, like you, if you get into the apprenticeship. Um, then we are partnered with NECA, National Electrical Contractors Association of San Diego. So they represent over 150 contractors in San Diego and Imperial counties. And if you happen to get into the apprenticeship, you would be working under one of those signatory contractors of NECA, National Electrical Contractors Association. And because of that partnership that we have with NECA and IBW 569, like I said, we're able to offer no cost uh, education to you as an apprentice because of that awesome partnership that we have. So moving forward, what is an apprentice? I know many of you don't know what an apprentice is. An apprentice is somebody who gets paid while they're learning. Yes, you're getting paid when you know nothing. Um, you also work under the direct supervision of a journeyman, somebody like myself. If we were working together on a job site and you were an apprentice, I would teach you everything I know, um, tips and tricks, things you couldn't learn in a textbook. And when it comes to electrical, you really need to know how to do it. You can't just learn it by reading and watching other people do it. So this is a unique situation where you're working side by side with somebody who's already been in the field and is certified as a journeyman by the state of California. Um, you also go to school at night, two nights a week, uh, 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. So two semesters on, one semester off, 
that off semester is nice. You get done working around 3 p.m. because you start pretty early and then you have the rest of the day. Uh, during the semesters when you're actually going to school, uh, it is tough. Those, those two days that you have school are long ones. So you might start at 6 a.m., get done at 2.30, go to school, study, do your homework in the, com uh, in the computer lab, and then school would go from 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. So it is uh, um, part-time, seven credits per semester, uh, and you are earning college credits through uh, one of our community colleges here in San Diego called Palomar Community College. So it's a great opportunity for you to gain those college credits um, and learn at the same time. So, we are very similar to a traditional college. However, we are learning by doing, right? Uh, traditional college, you mostly are reading, writing papers, listening to lectures, stuff like that. So, like I said, our uh, school is two nights a week. One night typically is lecture, and the next night is lab. You're doing what you learned in the lecture the previous night. It is an amazing way to get it embedded into your brain. Um, it worked awesome for me. I was always one of those uh, students who really liked to do things and thrived in, um, in doing it rather than just reading it. I was not, not much of a reader, um, but when I do read things that interest me, it gets, it's in there, it's in my brain. Um, so we are very similar in that we both have uh, minimum requirements and an entrance exam. So if you want to get into a college, you would have to take an SAT, right, and get high, really as high scores as you can. With us, we have an aptitude test. It's consi uh, consistent of math and reading, and it's pass or fail, okay? Then, uh, like I said, you do earn college credits and both of them lead to many rewarding uh, opportunities and you can take care of your family and yourself uh, comfortably if you complete college or if you complete an apprenticeship like ours. So moving forward, I'm going to tell you how you can apply if you are interested. First, you need to graduate, okay? If you don't graduate, at least get your GED. Those are minimum requirements. In that, you have to have uh, Algebra 1 or higher for two semesters or one full year. So I know many of you don't have Algebra 1 that says on your transcripts, it may say integrated math. And I believe that many of them are integrated math 2 or higher. So keep an eye out on that, okay? So get your math and pass your math. Uh, you do have to be able to, to, um, to do math because we have to be able to figure out if um, a certain um, component will work with the amount of electricity and resistance that's coming in, okay? Um, so once you're, you do graduate, you can come in on any Wednesday between two and four, bring in your high school transcripts, your valid driver's license, and social security card. Now, you need your valid driver's license because you do have to be able to drive to different jobs, okay? Um, public transportation isn't generally um, as reliable as we would like, and you may not necessarily be in, a, you know, very close to where you live. Um, I know there was a few times I was working in Camp Pendleton for a month at a time, and then Coronado Island, I was uh, helping with the Navy SEAL base, and also on uh, 28th Street. So you do have to be able to, to drive, okay? Um, so once you do apply, then you would get scheduled for that aptitude test we spoke about. So um, it's basic math, algebra, and a little bit of trigonometry like graphing, okay? And then reading comprehension. You read a story and you answer the questions pertaining to what you just read. We just wanna make sure you, know, you have the basics down, okay? Once you pass that aptitude test, then you get scheduled for an interview. So this interview is not your normal interview. It's a panel interview. There's eight people interviewing you all at once. So all eight of those people have been in the apprenticeship, graduated, and then now are successful either business owners, CEOs, CFOs, or running IBEW, the Electrical Workers Union, as a business manager. So they understand you're nervous, you're scared, you're excited, you're passionate, and they know what you're, they're looking for. So 
keep that in mind. Also, if you are interested, you can always contact me and I'll be I'll be happy to assist you in getting prepared for the interview and uh, helping you get a resume together and also, you know, reminding you that letters of recommendations from your uh, CTE instructors would definitely help. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the programs. We have two programs. We have the five-year Inside Wireman program. That is the most popular. It's the most competitive and it pays the most. There's over 420 apprentices in that program. Um, and like I said, it's very competitive. Um, but you can, you know, you can do everything when it comes to do comes to do with a uh, household uh, component or something in a, in a building. Um, it's so we don't work on the power lines, but we work everything from the sidewalk into the building. And I'll go a little more in depth about exactly what they'll learn. Then there's the four year sound and telecommunications. That's considered low voltage, 90 voltage, 90 volts or less. So um, they are specialized in what they do, although they are limited because they can only work on 90 volts or less, but they are specialized and very comfortable in um, the items that they work on. So I'm going to tell you about the five-year Inside Wireman program. This is, like I said, the one that's um, most popular and pays the most. So they work on the basic stuff, like the switches that turn on the lights, the receptacles where you plug your cell phone in to charge, uh, the fans that keep you cool, the power that comes to your house. Um, and then there's also stuff like emergency power that will turn on if, say, a hospital loses power. The electricians will hook that up. Um, renewable energy, that's huge here in Southern California, especially when it comes to solar. Using the sun's energy to create power. Um, a lot of those solar fields you see out in Imperial Valley and Palm Desert and Palm Springs are stuff that our members work on and apprentices. Um, also the wind turbines, using the wind to create energy as well. Uh, a lot of hospitals, uh, Kaiser Central, um, a lot of military bases. Um, it's a lot of fun because you're not at one job you're always moving um, and it's, it changes every day. So I'm gonna get into about um, their pay. This is, this is the important part, right? This is what we're all working for. So you start at $18 an hour. So from day one and you know nothing, if you had no experience, you're making $18 an hour. As long as you're working, going to school, you will get regular raises every six months, every six months. And when you graduate, you're at least at $45 an hour. Now I say at least because I guarantee you that will go up. When I first came in, I believe it was at $41.50 and that was a few years ago and now it's at $45. So, um, and the entire time that you're working, uh, after you, you know, finish your 90 day probation, you start uh, um, with your medical, you have dental and you have vision and you start earning towards your pension um, so those of you that don't know what a pension in is, a pension is when you retire, you'll receive a check every month, um, no matter how long you live. And a pension does not fluctuate with the stock market, like a 401k. So a pension is for retirement. And that's what a lot of your teachers are working for. Here's a few pictures of some of the stuff that you may do as an inside wireman, apprentice, and journeyman. Um, like I said, you're not working by yourself. You're working alongside a journeyman. Um, you know, you may look at the blueprints together and they'll give you recommendations and, you know, give you step-by-step -step directions on what you can do. And as you move along in, in your apprenticeship, you know, your first year or two, they're going to keep a pretty keep you pretty close and make sure that you're you're doing everything right but as you show them that you're able to do it and progress they'll give you you know they'll let you go and let you do it more often by yourself um, it definitely takes a lot of teamwork you do have to communicate with other trades um, the picture on the left I can see right there there's a lot of trades involved in that there's the iron workers there's the plumbers and pipe fitters 
there's electricians, there's cement masons, there's heavy machinery operators because they had to excavate that and, and dig the hole for us. So there's a lot of work that comes into that and you really have to be able to communicate as a team, not only to your coworkers, but to, but to other trades. And then there's a lot of pride when it comes to this stuff. You wanna do it perfect. You know, even if it's something that's gonna be five feet under the ground for the rest of, the, uh, rest of its life, you still wanna do it well. You gotta take pride in your stuff. Um, even if you have a little OCD, that's okay. <laughs> so moving forward to the other program, the four-year sound and telecommunications. This is the program I went through, the low voltage. Um, when I first heard about the apprenticeship, I wasn't too sure about electricity. I was a little scared. So I went into this program and I'm really happy that I went into it. I really like working with the little wires. I really like figuring out the, the systems. Um, not that electricians, the inside wiremen, don't have to figure out systems as well. It's just a little different. Um, like I said before, so the sound and telecommunications apprentice is specialized in what they do. They um, are certified in fire uh, in installation, fire alarm installation, dismantling, testing, programming, um, and every building needs a fire alarm system, right? Um, they're also certified in... Um, uh, audio and visual so like speaker systems speaker systems inside of a building speaker systems at a football stadium stuff like that speaker systems um, at an orchestra or something like that um, so they you know you get to work on some really cool little spots um, I know that uh, I got to help with the San Diego Symphony and their sound uh, systems I also got to work at um, I think it's well, it's sports arena to me, the, the arena, Viejas Arena, I got to help with their sound system. So I was, you know, walking up on their catwalk, you know, when no one was there and assisting with the sound of the uh, Viejas uh, Arena. Um, also, computer networking. So you get a full semester in um, creating a computer network hooking up computers to a switch and a router and working on IP addressing or internet protocol addressing and working with binaries, zeros and ones, zeros and ones. Um, that includes a lot of math there as well. Um, security and access control. So you are able to install a whole security system if you want with cameras, window sensors, motion sensors, door sensors, everything, you name it. And you're also able to program that. Um, we would have a lot of um, awesome labs here where you're able to work on those types of systems here and get to know them here so that when you're out on the job, you feel comfortable. Moving forward to the pay of the sound and telecommunications. So you start at a little higher rate, $21.42, because it is a four-year program and you receive your raises once a year as opposed to inside wiremen, you receive a raise every six months. So this one, you start at 2142, every year you get a raise, and when you're a journeyman and you graduate, you're at $32.95. So that will go up as well. Um, so that evens out to about $83,000 a year. Still really good money. Um, the inside wiremen um, equals out to about $102,000 a year, six figures. They do earn, uh, the sound and telecommunications apprentice does earn the same benefits. So they still have their medical, dental, vision, and they are earning towards their pension and vested after five years. Same as inside wire. Here's a few pictures of our sound and telecommunications. What some of the stuff you may be working on. Um, the, the middle picture there, the blue wires, that's all going to computer or uh, that's all for data. So you definitely have to be really organized when you're, you're pulling these wires in. Everything has to be labeled, and then you have to make it look nice. It's, it's like artwork. <laughs> um, the bottom right picture is one of our labs for fire alarm systems. So although this is on a really small scale, this is how it would be inside of a building. Um, the top right part of it is actually something that you'll never see. It's up in a ceiling. Um, and then this may be in like your teacher's break room. And then the, 
the panel on the left would be in the electrical room and only the firefighters would have access to that. So fire alarm systems are really intricate. They are involved with telephone because they have to call the fire department if there's a fire. They, are, they work with the elevators. They'll shut down the elevators if there's smoke or fire detected. Um, they'll also work with the air conditioning and heating. So they'll shut down the air and the heating if there's smoke or fire detected. So it's, that was one of my favorites, working on the fire alarm systems. On the left, the picture is some of our apprentices um, working in one of our labs. They're practicing um, cutting holes into the drywall so that they can install devices. So we give them great opportunity to be able to, to mess up at school if need be, and then hopefully not make too many mistakes at work. Although we understand as an apprentice and they're learning, they'll make mistakes and it's okay because they're learning. So if you become an apprentice, awesome, congratulations. It is really tough to get into, but I know that if you want it and you're passionate about it, you'll not only you'll contact me, um, but you'll find out what you can do more so that you can be there and show those people when you're in that interview room that you want to get into this apprenticeship and that you'll complete it. Um, so once you do graduate and become a journeyman, that opens the door to anything. And there's no real step stone or route that you have to go. You know, it can lead to, you know, foreman, superintendent, project manager, inspector, architect, company owner, but you don't have to go in that order. Um, so I know somebody who graduated one year after me, he took the um, general contractor's test and is now running his own company. And he graduated a year after me. Um, I've known several people who as soon as they graduated and became a journeyman, they got another raise, became a foreman, got truck keys, got a laptop for work and got a, a work phone as well and they're running their own small crew because as an apprentice they showed that they were a leader that's what we're looking for we're looking for leaders we're looking for the ones who will be the leaders in our industry and the best of the best i always tell people that our apprenticeship is kind of like the harvard of electrical we are the best we are the best and it is difficult to get into because of that but totally worth it in the end because you'll be able to take care of yourself and your family uh, here's a few more pictures. So the top one on the left, that actually is myself there as an apprentice. And then three other ladies that are still thriving, Natasha, April, and Elizabeth. Um, you know, they're either foremen or journeymen traveling um, and, and just doing their thing and thriving. This is not just a man's job. This is for everyone, okay? Um, the top right picture is pretty cool. It's actually being lowered in by a crane and that will be in the ground. That's where some wires will be pulled in and what they call spliced or connected together. And that hole in the top of that concrete block is a manhole. So not only will cars be driving over that and that's a street, but somebody can actually go in there if they need to. And here's a few more pictures. Um, that picture in the middle is Ocean Beach Pier. That's, uh, that was a while ago, but that's Neil Electric pulling in new power to the cafe. Um, the only reason why I know that is because one of my volunteers, his, his old company, Neil Electric, um, he told me, he's like, hey, that was my company and we did that job. <laughs> um, the, the two pictures on the left and the right, that is Petco Park. He was an apprentice at the time, and now I, I don't know his name, but I know that he's somebody who is actually like a superintendent now. He's still thriving, um, but at that time he was an apprentice working on Petco Park. Uh, wind turbines, and then the top left one is um, some of the stuff that we could do if you happen to come in to our apprenticeship for a tour. We would do some hands-on labs like that um, to show you, you know, hooking up a switch and a receptacle to a light bulb and seeing if it works. Here's some stuff we do is outreach. We help uh, build a solar panel together. We talk about how solar works. And then we also power up that wind guy there, the blue guy, uh, his name is Bob. <laughs> uh, 
And then these are just some of the examples of some of the, the jobs that you could be working on, um, whether it be existing or upgrading their systems. Um, we definitely worked on a lot of different projects. I did get to work on Petco Park after it was built and help install more TV monitors because they didn't have enough apparently. And I helped install more TVs at Petco Park. Um, I also got to work on uh, SeaWorld, uh, the electric eel ride. I got to help um, install temperature controls for some of the water animals. I think it was the squid that's in the electric eel ride. So I got to work on some pretty neat projects. Um, and it's pretty exciting to, to drive by some of those projects and say, I help work on that, or I help build that. You know, I'm pretty proud when it comes to that. And as you can see, I'm pretty passionate about this because I know that there's such a great opportunity um, for students and young adults to be able to get into this program and actually learn and get paid while they're doing it and not accruing any debt which is one of the major pluses when it comes to that. So I didn't get to tell you, the only thing that you pay for is your books and your tools. That's it, okay? And we always try and get a discount for our students so they don't have to pay uh, full price for their books. We try and get, um,